What's up and welcome to the All Media channel. Breaking news and update on the Tamar Braxton, Chris Sean Rock, and James Wright Chanel fiasco. We have a video update from Atlanta celebrity groupie Robert, a self-proclaimed member of Tamar's camp, but much more of a pass me that please person to the singer in reality, an assistant of sorts. Anyway, let's all listen in to get the detailed account of the fight and find out what all led up to Chris Sean Rock assaulting James Wright Chanel in Tamar Braxton's dressing room. I guess we're just giving everybody a second to, um, to come on in the room. I hate that I even have to do this. I hate that I even have to do this. But I, I'm going to tell because I'm going to tell the truth and what the truth is. So I'm going to give y'all a second to, to roll through real quick. <laughs> Larry, cut it. My, my problem is this. My problem is this. I was in the room. I was next to James. There were, it was me, James, David, Mooney, Tamar in that room. I want to address the assault. I want to address the assault. That's what I want to address right now because that is what is at question. And what is that question is the assault. And it breaks my heart that we even have to go this route and even have to go back and forth on social media. For those that don't know, I am the tour manager for Tamar Braxton, the Love and War Tour. And what I'm going to address is the assault. We were in the room. At the end of the show, Krishan walked up to Tamar. Troy brought her out a cake. Tamar put her hands in the cake. She had a right hand full of cake and some cake in her mouth. And Krishan came out and was like, where you going, sis? Got to go on stage. And I'm looking like, huh? Like, what's, what's happening? And Tamar, like, the, the show is over. What do you mean? She said, I'm about to go on stage. And she's like, huh? You ain't, you ain't been out? You haven't went out there already? Because she was supposed to go out during the twerk session. She hadn't been out. She, she, Krishan hadn't been out. So I was like, come on, ladies. Let's just take this in the dressing room. So we went in the dressing room. And in the dressing room, it was me, Tamar, and Krishan. Tamar was trying to figure out why hadn't Krishan, why didn't Krishan go out during the twerk session? And she's looking at me and I'm like, I don't know, like Krishan, I, I don't know why she didn't go out. So Krishan breaks down and starts crying. And I felt bad and the Holy Ghost in me, cause I carry it everywhere with me. I began to give her a hug and everything like that because I like Krishan. I like her. And, you know, and I was like, I don't want to see nobody with their feelings hurt or I don't want nobody feeling some sort of way because there was a big line of miscommunication that took place. So I began to try to comfort her and, and hug her and be like, no, don't cry because it's not that, you know what I'm saying? We Nobody was trying to, I don't want you to feel no sort of way. And this was just in the dressing room. And this was me, Krishan, and Tamar at the time. As the time went on, Krishan was explaining that this happens to her all the time and she felt some sort of way because she felt embarrassed. She felt embarrassed and she felt like, you know, that this is just like, that shouldn't happen to her because, you know, she was just prepared to go out during a twerk session and that time had come and she didn't go out. So Tamar is still asking like, well, what happened? What, what happened? Why didn't she go out? And I'm like, shit. I'm trying to figure out what happened too. So, um, David and Mooney come in. They both do makeup. And we're all at this point talking about what happened. Tamar is saying, Mooney, what happened? Da, da, da. Mooney was saying that Krishan was not on the side of the stage and when it was time for the twerk part. Mooney is a choreographer and he also does makeup. Mooney was saying Krishan was not on the side of the stage. So, it's like, well, what happened? What happened? Well, who was, who, was, who was there? Who can... Like what everybody's screaming, what happened? What happened? At this point, Krishan is like, Yes, I, I was on the side of the stage. I was there. And I was like, okay, and I'm 
me, I'm trying to calm everybody down. Just let's do this uh, a peaceful conversation because Krishan is upset. She's very upset. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, okay, let's calm down. Like everybody, let's talk this thing out or whatever. And then um, a few more talking, talking, talking. And then James comes in the room. So at this point is me, Krishan, David, Mooney, Tamar, James. James comes in the room and notices that Krishan is upset. By the mirror, Krishan is on the right-hand side. James is right next to her. He was consoling her. And I was literally right next to James. And Tamar asking James, well, what happened? Why didn't Krishan go out there during the twerk session? And James said, we was looking for her on the side of the stage and she was not on the side of the stage. And Krishan got very upset and she was like, I was on the side of the stage. I was there. Where, where else would I go, man? You lying. Like, that's Cap. I was, I was on the side of the stage. Like, I was there on the side of the stage. And James said, no, no, you, you wasn't. We called for you there. Krishan said, say I, say I wasn't there one more time. Say I wasn't there on the side of the stage one more time. James was like, I'm telling you, we was calling you and you bop, 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 bop. I'm like, oh, shit. Literally happened just like that. And here I am, like, this girl just hit this boy a couple of times with them big ass rings on her finger. And I'm just like, no, this is not happening. This is not happening. This is not happening. I get Krishan to the other side of the room. At this point, James' face is leaking with blood. She going off saying, man, that's cap, that's cap, da 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 Everybody is shocked. And I mean shocked because, mind you, I like Krishan. I'm still at this moment trying to de-escalate everything like I don't want this to go left. Like this is this is crazy. This is all craziness. And I'm like, Krishan, you got to calm down. Everybody, you got to calm down. Like this, every it's a lot of yelling at this point. Mooney and James, get her ass out of here. Da, 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 da. You know, I'm like, OK, everybody calm down. I got Krishan on my right hand side. Now she's at the back. The, the door is right there. I'm blocking Krishan on here because at this point she don't go. She like, well, what's up? Like her defense is all the way up now and people trying to get in the door and I'm stopping people from coming in the door. Troy was one of the people that I stopped from coming in the door. And I'm like, OK, y'all, let's let's we got to talk this out. We cannot. This is crazy. Tamar walks over to Krishan. That is like she said, that is like my blood brother. You cannot just go hitting my blood brother in his face. What is wrong with you? What's happening? All of this is, all of this is going on. Everybody's emotions are on 100. And then Krishan, I got Krishan out of the room when Bandcamp came in the room. Bandcamp came in the room, got Krishan out of the room, and that was that. I walked out of the room and I called the police. So in the video that she just made and said, well, why wasn't the police there? Why wasn't this there? And actually, to tell the truth, I caught I, we had there were 28 security guards in that building that day from the Novo security team. Twenty eight. I went to the head of security at Novo and I asked them, I said, I need somebody to get up here right now. Somebody has just been assaulted. They asked me questions. They said, who? I said, James. I said, can you call the police? You know what Novo told me? Novo said they cannot call the police. I had to call the police. I went and called 911. You can call 911 our public records. You can call 911. You can check the records. Right after it immediately happened, I called 911. It took the police over two hours to get to the Novo. We were, I was not leaving until the police came. I was not leaving until the police came. It took the police over two hours to get, it took them over two hours to get to the Novo. The police did come. A police report was reported. This whole incident, this whole incident is horrific. It's crazy. It make it, and then for everybody to jump online, 
to say something about Tamar is wild. Everybody say James is lying is wild. Nobody had nothing against Krishan. I love Krishan. I love the ratchetness. I love the rowdiness. I love watching her on Zeus. I love her with um, the baddies east, west, north, south, all of that. Krishan said one thing that was absolutely correct when she did her um, live today. She said, I'm that bitch. God got me. And she's absolutely correct. For somebody of her stature to come from where she came from and to somehow manage to garnish the hearts of over 5 million people that follow her on Instagram. Yes, she is that bitch. For somebody to have a song that a whole stadium can recite. Yes, she is that bitch. For somebody who can have a hit reality TV show, I'm sorry. Yes, she is that bitch. And for somebody to say otherwise, they are clearly hating. She is that bitch. But guess what? Krishan hit the wrong bitch. Because guess who else is that bitch? James Rice Chanel. And he did nothing to her. He did nothing to her. He was consoling her. And she popped him a couple of times. And that's why his face looked like it looked. And if you are in the public eye multiple times like you are, you would not show your face either. I was there when the police came. I was there when the police left. I literally flew to New York the next day, hopped on a plane, flew back to L.A. because it was just a lot going on. And it was just like, I hate that all of this is happening. I hate that all of this is happening. I hate that everybody trying to blame Tamar. I hate that everybody trying to now all these talk this talk all this stuff because this tour, Love and War, we are supposed to be celebrating 10 years of a great album, an album that helps so many people um, through whatever times. Music saves people. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're supposed to be celebrating. And for this to happen, I hate it. 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 I hate it with everything inside of me. And I really wasn't going to say anything. I don't like to get into drama. I don't like to say anything. I, don't, I stay neutral in a lot of things. I don't like to take people's sides. I don't like to. I stay neutral. Right is right and wrong is wrong. But when I when I got online and I seen the, the DJ, DJ Sky and Krishan was saying, I didn't hit anybody. Um, I, I did this. No, it, it, that's not that's not true. And y'all know it's not true. And Bandcamp did not have the music. Y'all know he didn't have the music. And the videos that you're seeing, you're seeing we do a tribute to Tracy, which is what we do before we end the show with Love and War and Tamar comes out. How did Krishan get the microphone? Because the iconic, legendary Tony Braxton was had a microphone on the side of the stage. And when she walked off the stage on her set, she had that microphone still sitting over there. That's how she got that microphone because that microphone was on the side of the stage. She was not supposed to come out on Love and War. Love and War is the ending of the tour. So when she's out there, of course, what is Tamar supposed to do? Hey, y'all, this is my sister. Tamar had no idea she hadn't came out there before because Tamar was in the back or whatever. DJ, the, the band camp did not have the music. As you see, she was up there trying to airdrop the music to him. I'm the one who told DJ Sky to get off of the stage because at that point, I really honestly didn't know what was going on. And I was like, yo, you got to get off the stage. This is a whole production going on. Like, what are you doing? Like, you got to move. And she she wasn't taken to what I was saying. She's like, I'm DJ Sky. I'm Krishan's um, DJ. And I was like, okay, you got to go, though, because we in a show, babe. Like, you got to go. And when I tell you I was I was being nice and, and I'm not taking no sides or anything like that. My spirit, everybody who knows me, you can try to spirit by the spirit. You know me. You know me. You know me, and I am not a mean person. Now, I, I can have some choice words. But in this case, I love Krishan. That's the crazy thing. I love it. But it wasn't a vibe that night. It was just like, it was like horrible. And I, and I just wish... Um, that it was a vibe because it would have, you know, been great. The outcome would have been great. But it was like, here's the thing with that. When people say clout chasing, um, Tamar has sold millions of albums. Like, we, nobody has to clout chase. This tour, this tour, the L.A. show was sold out weeks before we even got to L.A. Weeks before we got to L.A., the show was sold out. Every show that we have done 
has been sold out. Nobody has to clout chase. Nobody's looking for anybody to do anything. Every show was every show was sold out. Thank God. Thank God because God favors us. God favors this team. God favors Tamar. Every show was sold out. And when you get in the audience, the, the audience, if you've ever been to a Tamar Braxton show with the real Tay Martians out there, the millions and millions of people that follow her, they know all of her songs verbatim. I literally sometimes sit in shock and people still know these songs from 10 years ago. And I'm like, hello, she's a Braxton. The Braxtons are like the black versions of the Kardashians for the African-American community. And I, I mean, and it is what it is. They are all iconic. They are all iconic and everybody knows who the Braxtons are. So it was like, nobody needs any clout to do anything. Nobody needs any, nothing. The show, we've had iconic legendary people in the audience that have not mentioned a single, we did not mention that they were even there. They were just coming to see the show. Nobody needs anybody named to see a show. I hate that all of this is misfortunate. I hate, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it because everybody, and I look at everybody as a, as a good person. I don't see the evil in people and sometimes that's my problem as tour manager because I do know that there are evil people in the world. And I just wish all of this would go away. And the only reason I am saying something and I got on here because my friend is injured and he is hurt mentally and physically. And I don't like that because we came to do a show. We came to get the people what they wanted. The people um, had an amazing time at the show. Everything was great. And then to hear somebody say, oh, um, whatever she said, be careful or something like that. Baby, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You say you love God and God is this. The weapons will form, but they will not prosper. The weapons will form, but they will not prosper. And. Sometimes what people really need in life is a good, good, good reality check. And as much as I love Krishan and as much as I love the ratchetness, there is a time and a place for everything. And it really, really, really was a horrible, horrible situation. And I'm just like, you make it. And, and Tamar really, I'm like. It was like damned if you say something and damned if you don't. She was, tr you know, trying to say something so that everybody won't think that, okay, well, what type of friend is her? She's not saying anything. But it's like, I knew all of this shit would happen. Like, I knew every everything that's happening, I knew would happen because I know how social media can take something and run with it. I know how social media can take something and run with it. But no, the police were called. The police were called. I called the police. I called 911. If anybody wants to go get the records, I'm sure you can pull them up um, from the Los Angeles County or whatever district we was at the Novo and pull them up and go go hear it for yourself. You know, and and I was not the only one that called 911. Chris Sibley called 911 as well. You know, so I don't worry about people threatening and doing anything or doing anything like that, because let me tell you, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And one thing about this team over here, <laughs> the Holy Ghost provide the Holy Ghost is, is with us throughout all of the way. For, 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 that, for this particular tour to sell out all of the shows, and she has not did this album in 10 years, you know, that ain't nobody but God. That ain't nobody but God. Nobody but God. And one thing that I don't really worry about or worry about anybody that I deal with is God is walking with them and God is talking with them. And I want to end this live on a prayer. I want to pray for Krishan. I want to pray for everybody that's involved in this situation, because at the end of the day, God is going to get the glory out of this somehow, some way. God is going to get the glory out of this somehow, some way. Krishan, if you're listening to this, I know you know this face. Because I was the one that was giving you a hug and telling you everything's going to be all right. And guess what? Everything still is going to be all right. Because there's some issues and things that I feel that you probably need to deal with. That people have done you wrong for such a long time. You take the anger out on the wrong people. We were there to love on you. Nobody was hating. Nobody was doing anything else. Everybody's turning this into something that is not. You have been hurt for so long by so many people. Used and abused. And it's not fair to you. It's not. And it's not fair to the people who get the end of the stick of you arguing. So we're going to end this in prayer. Father God, we come to you today. God, tell you, thank you. 
Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for uh, keeping our eyes um, closed when we go to bed at nighttime, God. God, somebody didn't wake up this morning and we woke up this morning. And so while we have the activities of our limbs, God, we just want to tell you, thank you, God. God, we just want to take, tell you thank you for every gift that you has that you have given us, God. God, we just want to tell you and ask a prayer over Krishan right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, keep her mind, God. God, keep her heart, God. God, let her know that everybody is not out against her, God. God, pray for Tamar right now in the name of Jesus, God. Pray for all the darts and all the enemy is trying to come after her. Let them not get to her, God. Let Keep her mind, God. Keep this second leg of this tour, God. Keep her mind focused on what we came to do, God. God, I ask that you say a special prayer for my friend James. A special prayer for my friend James, God. I know that this was traumatized him, and I know that he's going through it right now. But, God, we know that with you, all things, the good and the bad, all things work together for the good of us that love the Lord. And God, right now, that's what we focused on right now. I ask that you make a shift, God. Shift the conversation, God. Shift the atmosphere, God. Shift what's going on in the internet, in the internet world, God. Shift it. Shift it so that they can see that you're going to get the glory out of all of this. I'm not going to yell your name and act one way and act another way, God, because that's not what you called us to do. God, you blessed us beyond measure. Some of us, some people can't wake up and pay their car note and pay their house note and pay their mortgage and pay this. But God, you touched us, me, Krishan, Tamar, James in ways that we don't have to worry about some of those things. And for that, we tell you, thank you. God, be with the Internet, be with the stories, be with the false narratives, God. In Jesus name, this ends tonight. Amen. And I ask that all of y'all, whatever you do. Whatever you do, be mindful. My pastor always says, the words that come out of your mouth live in your future. So choose your words wisely. All right, you guys. Tell us what do you think about all of this drama? Was Chris Sean wrong? Should she be arrested and charged with assault? What would the consequences be if James had attacked Chris Sean? Should Tamar have fought Chris Sean for attacking James? Did Tamar fail to protect and defend someone she allegedly considers to be like a blood brother to her? Do you guys even believe this version of the story or is Tamar's alleged manager just clout chasing and being messy as usual? Let us know your thoughts and be sure to like, share this video, and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching the All Media Channel.